Church from Clarity Crafts here in the UK. Welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. I hope everybody's doing okay today. We shall just, I think I've gone live. We'll just wait for viewers. I can see, there we go. I can see people are looking in. I wonder whether the lovely Mo is going to be the first online to say good morning. She's normally there. And then as soon as I start seeing the chat coming through, I know we're good to go. The lovely Sue should be in the room with you this morning. So if you have any questions, um, she's there to help. Um, she'll post any links that we talk about during the course of the morning. And um, I'm sure our lovely design team will be here as well. So, hmm, no comments yet. I can see we've got viewers. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Glynis. Good morning. Oh, and breathe. Good morning, Ken, Sharon, Karin, Susan. Come on, Mo, where are you this morning? There she is. Good morning. Oh, I can breathe now. <laughs> I was having a little bit of a panic because I couldn't see any chat coming through. Um, but I'm glad I can, because I can relax now. So hope everybody's well. What's the weather like with you today? We forgot to do that last week. I got sidetracked, didn't I? I was so excited about showing off um, the designs for the new and exclusive last week. So um, it's sort of sunny here in Edenbridge in Kent, and it's but it's fresh, definitely fresh this morning. So um, yeah, I, I think they said towards the weekend. I saw in the weather last night. I think the weekend in Kent it was meant to get up to 24, 25 degrees. October, crazy, sunny in Hillingdon, bright at the moment, but not sunny, beautiful in Crawley, yeah, good morning, Margaret, see, there we go, lovely Carol's in the room with you as well, have I seen, if I miss Jane, I'm sure Jane's in the room, okay, that should be my text from Sue, can't see anything yet, not coming through, hmm, Okay, um, Sue seems to be having technical issues this morning. Good morning, Jane. Um, can everybody see me okay? Or is it just Sue? Is Sue having technical issues? Um, let me just message Sue. Technology, she's only sitting downstairs. Um, that seems okay with everyone else there we go let's just message it there she is she's there now super duper <laughs> okay oh that wasn't a really good start first of all i couldn't see any chat then sue says she can't see anything she's there i can see you sue well i can't but i can so um yeah we're gonna have a nice chilled out hour and um yeah we're going to go with the flow. So lots happened since we, we last got together. Um, what do we do? So last week, um, Groovy Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, was it Wednesday? No, it was Thursday. Lost track of days. Thursday and Friday, it was a new and exclusive from Linda Williams. Those lovely layering frames. Beautiful as always. Um, I've gone, I've, my mind's gone blank. Brain fog. Um, <laughs> I tell you what, I need some coffee. And how about this? Look at this. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Ken. Um, I don't know if you can see. I don't know what camera to bring this in. I don't want to tip it. Let me see if I can come in on camera three. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Paul's Groovy Tuesday. So thank you very much, Ken. This is definitely going to keep my coffee nice and hot. Perfect. And that's going to be used just for Groovy Tuesday. So, um, so yeah, so thank you. Um, yeah, where was I? So it was the new and exclusive from Linda Williams. Um, and we recapped on the Christmas the, in the country. Um, the Oriental, and my brain is a complete fog. What was the last one? No, it's gone. 
absolutely cold. <laughs> What's on my notes from last week? I probably didn't say what it was, did I? No, I just said new and exclusive. Oh, well. It'll come back to me. Someone will remind me what it was. I can picture Tuscany. Tuscany. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> Good morning, lovely Josie. There we go. I know. See? Brain fried. So we had, I had that on Thursday into Friday. Then Barb had nine o'clock and one o'clock with those lovely quote postcards and the stamps and the inspiration stencils from the lovely Eileen Godwin. And then on Sunday, um, it was those lovely two-way overlay baubles, wasn't it? And the stencils designed by Jazz, absolutely gorgeous. So I can remember everybody else's, I just can't remember what I was doing. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so yeah, a, a quieter week this week here at Clarity Towers. Um, we've got the lovely um, Tina Cox is on TV on Thursday with the Pergamano show at 11 and 3 with some fantastic four new Christmas plates from Linda Williams. There's a goose, there's a Noel, there's a lovely Christmas tree with funky little snowmen, and there's a fourth one. No, gone. But there you go. I'm just putting it, yeah, frame fog. And I haven't got any artwork to show because it's already gone up to TV, ready for Tina on Thursday. So, um, so yeah, yeah, he says. Right, so what have we been looking at? So over the past few weeks, we've been looking at this fantastic handbook from Linda Williams. Fairground horses, carousel horses. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See, this is a great thing of having the design team in the room. <laughs> Oh, dearie, dearie me. Should I just start again? Should I switch off and, and come back in again? <laughs> Might be easier. Okay. Anyway, we've been looking through this fantastic book from Linda Williams. And we've been working through week on week all of the, the various different sort of multi-needle tools. Um, we started off with the, the Pico Vs in the three different sizes. Um, we had a look at the angle tool, then we moved on to the cross, to the four in four, the heart and almond, almond. Um, so that's what we looked at last week. We had a little bit of a play with that. Um, we saw some bunny rabbits down here, didn't we? And then this week, we're gonna have a look at the moon tool. And I'm sure you will see some little characters or little images in here as well as we work through it. So the moon tool, a um, little introduction from um, Linda Williams. This has 12 needles in it. We've got our sampler pattern as well. So, um, so that's what we're gonna need. So if, if we go through together, I mean, it's the same thing we're using week on week. So, but maybe you're tuning in for the first time. So what we're going to need is we need a photocopy of our printed pattern. Okay, I've, I've copied, a, made a couple of copies for mine. Um, so we've got that. So pop that to one side. Then we need our um, Pico foam, our black Pico foam. We're good for shallow perforating. Then we need our super foam. So I've got the A4 super foam. Okay, so we need that. We need our printed pattern. Some parchment. So I'm just going for the, the A5 parchment. We need two tumble dry sheets. Our groovy guard. And our moon tool. Okay. So that's what we, we're going to play with today. And don't forget, every week, um, the lovely Glynis has very kindly created two projects using the tool that we look at during Groovy Tuesday. And, um, and so what on Sunday coming up, 
there'll be two projects using the moon tool to give you some inspiration because what I'm doing is just having a play and showing a couple of little tips and tricks during the hour. So Glynis has created these two pieces here. So again, I love that what Glynis has done, she's used the tag throughout all of her projects. And I think it's a really nice, it, it's small, it's compact, but it's also very useful. And it really does showcase the various different multi-needle tools. So we've got the frame going around the outside and then a little bit of a, a pattern build in the middle. So that's one of the projects coming up on Sunday. And then this one, I, I love this little funky car and trees um, from um, Tina Cox. See, and this is nice, look at a, a double border, but you'll notice that there's, um, the outer one looks more like a scallop rather than a border. Um, and these sort of pinwheel type effects or starbursts or sunbursts, um, so that's what you've got to look forward to on Sunday on the Clarity Matters blog. Okay. Another sip of coffee in my lovely cup. Great thing is that the coffee will never go cold, but the downside of that is it doesn't go cold. <laughs> if that sort of makes sense. So, um, yeah. Oh, Forgot one thing, well, not one thing, groovy tabs. Definitely need some groovy tabs as well. So I've just seen them in front of me. I've got a few. Okay. I think we're good to go. I think we'll, we shall do. The less waffling I do, the, the less um, silly things I'll say. So, um, can you say it might be the almond and hot? I think that the blip with the email that went out, it had the right blog, but I think um, the image was, wasn't was changed on the eShot that went out. So the correct blog has been uploaded with the almonds and the heart last week. Um, it's just that the image in the um, email was wrong. It was the image from the previous week. So, um, so yeah, so that should, I'm sure it is. Well, just have a check, I'm sure that the right blog was posted. Uh, look, I'm just having a look in the background. Yeah, definitely. So the, the right blog was posted. So um, it was just say, it was just the imagery in the eShot that went out that was incorrect. So, right, nice and calm. Um, and I think we'll get going. Are we ready? Are we? I think we are. Okay, so to start off with, what we're going to do, we're going to take our, we're going to clear the text first, get rid of all the little bits and pieces. So I've got my Pico foam. Then I'm going to take my tumble dry sheet, like so. So we're using the Pico foam for shallow perforating. Then we're going to take the, the pattern and position that over the top. I'm going to take my piece of parchment and I'm going to wipe it on both sides because I want to do some embossing after I have perforated. Okay, so it's a good habit to get into. Even if you're not going to do any perforating, sometimes, it, you know, like when you, you do something and you think, oh, maybe I'll do this all the time. Maybe I won't. <laughs> Who knows? Okay. So we're going to attach that with our um, groovy tabs. Now, because we're using a, a 12 needle tool, I'm going to bring my super foam into play. And I'm going to take my tumble dry sheet. Oh, and I forgot to say, yeah, I did see. And then I'm going to take my moon tool and I'm going to lubricate the needles. Okay. Make sure it's the um, tumble dry sheet you're perforating and not your fingers. Okay? You don't want you don't want to perforate your fingers, I can tell you that for nothing. <laughs> okay. So we've got that good to go. Oh no, I've got more groovy tabs there. Now let's have a look in the um, the book and let's have a look at some of the things that Linda has done with it. Um, so let me bring it and see which one we're going to 
have a play with today. Okay, so let's have a look. So, see, I love this pinwheel effect. I think that's really cool. But I like this one as well. And this is nice, a nice little... Uh, there's that pattern that um, Glynis has used in her project here. There it is. And Glynis has just repeated it. So you can see that you, once you've got the pattern from your book, um, then you can replicate it and sort of repeat the process as well. The same with the border, the corners, you can extend those as well. Okay, so I reckon I want to, oh, look at those little butterflies. Oh, they're cute. Right, okay. Okay, okay. I reckon I'm going to go for, should we start nice and easy? <laughs> I'm going to go for this one first. Okay, so this one we're going to go for. So I'm going to definitely use my groovy guard to focus the area. I'm going to come in on camera three. Oh, that wasn't badly positioned, was it? No, now I'm going to mess it up and move it around. There we go. Here we go. Four eyed alien. <laughs> Which one is? <laughs> Are we talking about this one? A four-eyed alien. Oh no, I've just noticed that one. The little snowflake. Aren't they cool? Really cool. Okay. Glasses at the ready. Definitely need my glasses. <laughs> Definitely need to lay down in a dark room as well. <laughs> but that's another matter. I won't... I'll, when I finish, I'm just going to switch the lights off <laughs> and stay in here all day. Okay. So when we have a look at the, the moon tool, you can see it has that lovely shape, doesn't it? There we go. Ooh, focus. Okay, hands are so dry. They look terrible. <gasps> Sorry about that. Okay, and also what you'll you'll notice if you're using them at all is that these two outer ones are longer than all the rest. So that's sort of great for your positioning. Okay, so let's have a look. I'm gonna what's gonna how am I gonna do this one? Do I wanna come in from the front, line those two tools up, needles up there, and go upright? Does that work for me? I don't know whether it does. I think holding it in the upright position and putting the needles in place works better. Okay, so there we go. Made our first perforation, like so. And I'm going to turn my work. Okay, I'm going to put that one in. Ah, okay. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to put the inner needle, position that one in place first, and then swing over on that one. Just like so. Turn it around again. So turn it so that it's comfortable for you to see when you're doing this. Okay. Kalina said the moon tool is one of her favourites. Okay. And it doesn't take long, we're just enjoying the process. And the patterns are there to guide us for positioning and to make things easy. Oh, sorry. I am now we're going over here. Look at the screen pool to make sure you're in the right place. I keep turning it round. Hang on. There we go. That one goes there. That one goes there. And perforate. 
Okay, so that's that one done. There's my little bit of uh, black card. So we can pop that underneath and have a look at that one. There we go. So if I come in on the, let me zoom in a little on the overhead. I haven't readjusted that one yet. Ooh. There we go. So we're going to, I'll zoom in and then I'll reposition so we can have a look at it in a little bit more detail. There we go. So we have our little pin, pinwheel. Okay. So let's, I've done that one. Now I, I want to do these ones here. And then I can do the little butterflies. I think those butterflies are really cute. So, ooh, oh, wrong camera. Just as well I wasn't pulling a funny face. Okay. So, I think I've got a funny face anyway. <laughs> All right. So, now on this one, what we're doing is we're perforating the top half of the design. And then we relocate the needles in the first two points and we go back in okay on that one and on this one so get it so that you can see what you're doing that always helps i find see now this one's quite good because what i've done so you, you're going back in where that single needle that one that's more um that's more longer, that is longer, that makes it easier to make sure that you go around in that complete design. And it'll be the same on this one, because what we're doing, we're in inca interlinking, we're interlinking <laughs> the, um, the pattern. And you'll find that if you've um, got the book and you start to work through the various different designs, that by reinserting the, the last needle into the first needle sort of thing, um, it can change the look of the, the pattern. Okay. So we've got that one. Right, let's do these little butterflies. I mean, these are so cute. Who'd have thought from a, a series of perforations I mean, I know we've had aliens in the past, but butterflies are a lot nicer than aliens, aren't they? Is it in the right place? Where do I need to come? I need to come. No, that way. Oh, dear. Okay. So let's do all of these little butterflies like so and you'll find what way of holding the needle works better for you so i'm going to pop that one in there and then that one in there have we got any new viewers today is anyone tuning in for the first time today Okay, so let's have a look now. If I come back in on the overhead, like so. If I take my black piece of card and we pop that underneath. So now we can see that how we've started to build up those various patterns. Okay. Now instantly, I think I can see that the center of these are also perfect for um pico cutting the insides out as well um to get a different look um so trisha is new today um normally working so there you go do you catch up though um trisha do you go back and watch them afterwards or do you really prefer to join in live i know some people do some people i suppose see that's one of the great things about um, technology now, isn't it? That if you're available to tune in live as it happens, 
then that's great because you sort of you get the um, interaction with everybody. Um, but if you can't, you can always go back and watch it whenever you want. Maybe you need help sleeping and you just want something on in the background or something like that. Um, so it, it's great. And although you still see all the comments on Facebook, um, it's just a different way of doing it, isn't it? So, um, and it's great considering we're up to episode 115 um, on the Groovy Tuesday. Um, I think it, it's brilliant because there's such a vast library of different techniques. Um, I was looking back at some older clips earlier today um, and I was surprised at how long ago it was. So I'm going to digress slightly. Every week, celebrate clarity being 30. Um, we celebrate with uh, a design of the week. And um, and then, so Barb blogs about it, tells you all about it. You get 30% off. If you're in the club, you get your club discount as well. And this week's design of the week is one of my favorite plates. Um, it's a groovy plate. Ooh, let me zoom out. This is Barb's Christmas tree sampler. And um, which one am I going? Going that way. Whee, there we go. Um, so this is an A4 square groovy plate. It has nine lovely Christmas trees in there. Okay. And um, what I love about this is because they all have different styles to them. Um, you've got a paisley, you've got this lovely swirly tree, you've got sort of like your snow laden tree there, you've got a Christmas tree with candles. I quite like this one. You've got decorated. So there's a style there for um, for everybody. And but because they're only little um, let me get ruler, they are each little one is um two and a half inches by two and a half inches or hang on where's my numbers gone six centimeters by six centimeters so at christmas it's the time where we make most of our cards and i was looking back because i know that we did this in groovy tuesday back in the day and believe it or not we had a look at this um in october 2021 and um, we spent a couple of weeks using this plate so if you haven't got this if you're new to, to groovy tuesday and you haven't seen this one before then this is sort of a great opportunity to take advantage of that 30 percent discount and um coasters um they're sort of a quick and easy car if you've got the designer parchment, you don't even need to colour in. But I know when we looked at this one um, back in 2021, we were using it at the time because it was still early days in relation to introducing ourselves to the groovy system and also um, the starter kit and that lovely butterfly reef. And we created a couple of pieces of artwork um, using the um, starter kit frame and and sort of just coming up with various different sort of configurations of it. I'm just looking through my stash of past projects because I'm sure I bet I haven't. I bet I filed it away somewhere. No, can't find it. I should have looked earlier, but time ran away with me this morning. Um, so I know we did some beautiful pieces of artwork using that plate. But it doesn't matter because you can go back and have a recap on Groovy Tuesday and see what we did for it. Maybe you were there at the time. I'm sure many of you were. Um, oh, hang about. What's this in here? Is this it? No. No. I've obviously put it somewhere safe. Everyone thinks I'm organised. I am to a certain extent, but not sometimes when it's needed the most. So, uh, um, so yeah. But this is a fantastic little plate for um, 
for Christmas cards and presents because the designs fit perfectly within our Pergamano coasters. So um, I know I digress slightly, but I, I just thought, take advantage of it while it's at 30% off. So, okay, there we go. It's episode 29 all the way through to episode 33. Um, and it was on the 12th of October, 2021. Okay, so a question from Sylvia. Good morning, Syl Sylvia. Only my second time. I was late joining. So when you have a moment, which tool and pattern, please, as I now have the book. Okay, Sylvia. So what we're doing is we're looking at the moon tool, which is page 45 in the book. Um, and what we've been doing, I'm going to zoom back in now, now that I've showed you that lovely plate. Uh, oh, oh, sorry about that. Hang on, I'm coming in. Wrong way. Focus, focus. Put my hand in. Whee. There we go. So what we've been doing is we've been just perforating some of the patterns from that page. Okay. I'm going to have another slurp of my hot coffee. That's really hot. <laughs> I'm used to it being lukewarm now. Uh, I'm have to take the lid off. Okay. But when we do the craft along in a couple of weeks on Friday the 20th of October, this cup will definitely be in use. Okay. Right. So let's have a look at the um, design now that we've used. Okay. Pop the pattern to one side, take away the tumble dry sheet. Okay, so we've been perforating on the front of our design. So now in order to do um, some white work to introduce some um, whiteness like Linda has done here. So we've got that lovely pinwheel there and we've done these pieces and we've had a look at those little butterflies. So in order to, um, so Pat wasn't concentrating. Pat, come on, come on. Um, do I have a tumble dry sheet under the parchment? What I had was my sandwich combination was my Pico foam, my tumble dry sheet, which I've just lost, even though I just had it a moment ago. So it's a tumble dry sheet. All right, so imagine that's opened out. Then it was my pattern. Oh, there it is. Then it was the pattern. Then it was a parchment. If you pop that there, you can still see it. That's maybe that's another option. Um, you can still see the design, but it's definitely a lot clearer if the tumble dry sheet goes underneath the pattern. Okay. So. All right, let's have a look. So what we're going to do now is we're going to introduce some white work. Okay. And for that, I'm definitely going to use my pink mat, which is still in the box that I haven't unpacked from TV last week. Okay. Now, you don't have to use the pink mat, um, but if you're new to embossing on white work, the pink mat is definitely a big help. Well, it is for me anyway. Okay, so we've got a pattern, like so. We've perforated on the front. So now we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna have a look at the back. Okay. So we shallow perforated through the Pico foam. Then we're going to do some white work. And then we're going to go back and re-perforate with the one needle fine tool. Okay, to make the um, the design stand out a little more. Which I'm just going to grab out of my back. See, I'm not organized because 
you know on tv when i say oh yeah i put everything back in the bag my pink tool organizer okay i haven't had a chance <laughs> yet to to put it back up so it's looking very bare at the moment because everything what happens is i do a tv show and then i chuck it all in a box and then I decant it afterwards, take it out of the box and put it back in so it's in the right order. But I haven't done that yet. Okay. So let's pop that back over there, that way. And there we go. See, I'm not that organized. I'm really not. <laughs> All right, let's have a look on the overhead now. Okay. So groovy guard. Let's concentrate on an area first. So let's have a look at this pinwheel. Okay. Definitely another slurp of hot coffee. Right. Now, I'm going to use the groovy tools. Number one and the number two from the starter kit. See, technology, I'm reading all these comments. And... Um, Many of you are watching YouTube on the TV and then Facebook on your phone or your tablet. See, that that's great um, that you could, you're able to do that, especially on the TV as well. And somebody did say to me a couple of months back that you could actually at one point watch um, Facebook on your TV. Um, I know I can't on my one, um, but then for some reason I think it stopped. I don't think you could do it anymore. Um, but if I'm watching um, Create and Craft, if I'm at home, I watch it via YouTube and I watch it on my TV. Because um, on my TV, I can't download any app because I've got Sky Glass. Um, but it has YouTube on there, so I watch on there. And it's great to, to be able to... I can watch any YouTube video tutorial, and it's great to have it on such a, a big screen as well. So... Um, yeah, technology is fantastic. Okay. So what we're going to do first, I'm going to take, let's have, I'm going to take the number two tool. I'm going to go carefully. And what I'm going to do is just put a light layer of whiteness on the inside of that moon. Okay, so I'm just putting a base layer down. Now I can feel the tool going against the perforations. And if I squidge them, um, then it doesn't matter because we're going to re-perforate. Okay. So we're going to turn it around so it's comfortable for me to work in, or like so. And we're just putting... I'm not really putting light, gentle pressure on. Um, I'm going quite firm so you can see the whiteness, but because this is such a small area, then it's a great way of just creating that infill. <laughs> now, Mr. Ken has made a very good suggestion. Why don't I have one pink bag for Groovy Tuesday and one pink bag for TV. And the only reason, well, not the only reason, one of the reasons I don't do that is because of my scissors. Um, and my scissors, I can use anybody else's scissors, but I feel more comfortable using my own scissors. Um, so, um, and then I, I think you get used to your own sort of tools, don't you? I know they'd both be mine. But um, I think it's just one of those things, isn't it? So, so if we turn this over now, we can see. So that one obviously went a little bit weird, a little bit out of shape. I wonder why that was. I think I must have put the tool in the wrong place. It's definitely out of sync. But you know what? I don't mind. This is my practice piece, isn't it? Before I take the design. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the number one tool and I'm going to go in closer to those perforations. Okay. 
Now, if I was doing this on the black mat, I would be very aware that by using the number one tool, that I could go through the parchment. Okay. So. And all we do is we're now thickening up the white area within the moon. I must have had a little bit of a wobble on this one when I, I did this that one because it's definitely out of sync, is it? Or is it just no, it's definitely out of sync. It needed to be over. I know what I did. I went back into the same hole. I didn't follow the pattern. <laughs> oh, well, doesn't matter, does it? And I'm just going over now. That one definitely needs, this dodgy one needs a little bit more encouragement. Okay, so let's turn it over and have a look. See, and I love, you get that lovely raised effect. Okay. Really, really nice. So let's have a look at the butterflies. So I'm gonna go with the number two tool first. I'm gonna put my layer of whiteness in on each of those wings, like so. So we're just gently um, stretching the parchment within. Okay, now I'm going to go back with my number one tool. So this is what I, for me, I said the other day, um, I grew up on the, the groovy tools. So the, the Pokemon tool, though they have that lovely sort of silicon soft grip to them, um, I, all, I still prefer when I'm using the, the smaller tools to use the wooden tools. Um, I don't know, it just feels a little bit more, I wouldn't say organic is not the right word. They just, I find they fit more comfortable in my hand. Um, so, but each to your own, many of the trad parchers or people that have been doing Pergamano before prefer to use Pergamano tools. You'll still get the same result, definitely. Okay, so we put that in there. No, so let's turn them over. Let's have a look at our little butterflies. There we go. Don't look much like butterflies at the moment, do they? Um, okay. There we go. So there's a question there from the lovely Trisha. Is there a link of what tools to use? I seem to have a couple, but never use them, of course, but would love to have a set to get going with. Is there a starter group for Pergamano? There isn't really um, a starter kit in relation to the tools. Um, the first ones to get going with really are your basic needles, like your one needle, your two needle, um, your three and your four. Um, and so you, they're available in a fine needle, which will give you a smaller hole, um, or the bold needle. So if you're new, then the bold needle is definitely better if you want to then go progress down the, um, the pico cutting stage. Now, there is handbook one, which we have available as well, and that covers a number of more, um, less needles in them. Um, I wonder whether I've got my number one book here. I'm just having a look round. Um, I don't know if I've got my... Bear with, I'm just gonna go downstairs. Hang on. <laughs> and my dad's, there we go, I'm downstairs. And I'm just coming back up. Hang on a minute. <laughs> I'm just, just gonna find the book. I'm still here, don't worry. Right, okay. So the first handbook covers um, the three needle, the five needle, five in a circle, flower, 
semicircle, semicircle mini, and the swirl tool. So let me zoom out a little bit. So these tools are covered in um, volume one of Linda's book. Okay. And it's great because it gives you that introduction before you start going into more needles within a tool. And it follows the same format as volume two, but it's just, it's more of a, an introduction. So I would say that in a way, volume one um, is more of a starter kit when it comes to the multi-needle tools. And then you can progress on set two. Now, if you've already gone on to volume two, um, then it doesn't matter because you, you, you've gone advanced and you can go back. And they all mix and match between all of the, the different elements. Um, and the tool, it's, it's the same pattern, not the same patterns, but it's the same format um, as volume two. So maybe if you're, once you've got your basics, like your one, your two, and your four needles, then this one covers the ones in between. So you've got the three, the five, five in a circle. If I turn it over, you can see what they look like. You've got your three, your five, five in a circle, the flower tool is a lovely one, your semicircle, both large and small, and your swirl tool. Um, but that's a, a great way to get started when it comes to the multi-needles. Okay, so I hope that answered that question, Tricia. I, I always forget, I mean, we did the um, Pergamano Summer School with the lovely Linda Williams, um, and we covered all of those tools in that um, volume which you can go back and watch on our YouTube page as well. If you search for Pergamano Summer School, then um, those tools will be covered. Okay, so let me zoom back in again now. Can't believe the time. I know I say it every week, don't I? It's because I waffle too much. Perfect, Linus. Thank you. Linus has just reminded me. See, I'm so glad I have the lovely design team in the room. They know so much more than what I do. <laughs> Linus has just very kindly reminded me that um, there were, Linus also did projects using the tools from Volume 1 as well. And I remember that now. So apologies, Linus, for forgetting that. Um, so check out the Clarity Matters blog go back, there's hundreds and hundreds of tutorials on there, step by step. Um, obviously, all of the YouTube episodes are all available, and they're all free as well. See, teamwork, it really is about teamwork. We've got the lovely Sue popping up the links for the products to make it easy for you to find on our website. We've got the lovely design team in the room reminding me of what I've done and what I haven't done. Um, and it's, see, that's what it's all about. It's all about sharing. And sharing, another way of doing so, is going to Groovy Worldwide, Clarity Worldwide. Join those groups, especially if you're into Groovy, Groovy Worldwide. All of the design team are in there. There's lots of ideas and inspiration of the different plates. You get sneaky peeks of what's coming up on TV. Um, so, and, and it's such a friendly place to be. Um, ask whatever question, post your pictures of what you've made. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're struggling with something and you're not sure, ask. Don't be afraid to ask. I, I know it, it's easy to say no question is ever a silly question. Um, but behind the keyboard, you can be a little bit more brave, can't you? Um, and everyone is, is so friendly and willing to help in whatever way that they can. Um, so yeah, so check out those places as well, because not only obviously am I here that I can answer live if you tune in live at the time, um, but Facebook is, I was just about to say Facebook is even liver. <laughs> Facebook is live. Um, so, um, so yeah. So see, it's great to, sometimes I just take everything for granted because um, I expect, I don't expect, no, that's the wrong word. I presume 
that many people already know a lot of the answer to these questions. I'm still learning myself. Um, so never be afraid to ask at all. Um, because as I say, if you're asking it, there'll be someone else out there that may want to know the answer, but is a little bit shy or doesn't really want to comment or something like that. So, um, so thank you everybody. Okay, so let's have a look. So we've done some, some white work in our butterflies and we've done it in that dodgy pinwheel. But now what we want to do is we want to introduce the rest of the butterflies. Okay, so to do that, what we're gonna do is I'm definitely gonna use the number one tool and I'm also gonna use the one needle fine tool as well. Okay, but first I'm gonna use the number two tool. Right, hang on, let me get my eye in. Right, this could be a dodgy butterfly that may need some, some help. So what we're gonna do first, still working on the back, taking that number two tool, we're just gonna press and wiggle to give the butterfly a little head, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna just gently stroke the parchment in between to give him or her a little body. See, now it looks like a little angel with wings. <laughs> or is that just me? That's just me, okay. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the, the one needle fine and rather than hold it upright, I'm gonna hold it at an angle and I'm just gonna gently stroke the parchment. And that's so fine, it gives those lovely little antennae. Then I'm gonna take the, the number one tool and we're gonna put the little sensors on the end, okay? So now, when I turn him over, or her over, we've got a lovely little butterfly. Isn't that great? Okay, so it looks like someone's doing a snow angel. Yeah, it could also be a snow angel as well. So let's just recap that one again. So let's do this one. So I'm gonna take the number two tool and give that a little wiggle, like so. Let's do, let's do all of them while we're here. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And then I'm just gonna stroke to add the body in on both of them, like so. Then the number one fine. Just like so. A little bit long those ones. And then we're gonna take the number one tool and then just very gently give those a little wiggle. There we go. Just like so. Let me turn them over. Ooh. Body needs a little bit of work on it, but don't be all. <laughs> okay. So we've done that, okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna re-perforate to make the perforations a little bit more defined. So in order to do that, I'm gonna take my super foam with my Pico foam on top. I've gone back to the front of my parchment and then I'm gonna take my one needle fine Let's bring this over. And then holding the, the needle tool in an upright position, we're then going to re-perforate. Okay, and this is where you just gently take your time to re-perforate. Okay, now I know, based on the, the positioning of the perforations on this tool, well, I say I know, I don't really, but I do, but I don't. I'm gonna show you the difference if I re-perforate with the one needle bold. Okay, and what you'll find is that you'll lose um, part of the definition. Okay, that makes sense? 
There we go. So we have that lovely, so look on the, the overhead. There we go, look. You definitely see that kind of, let me bring that one up while we, rather than reposition. So there we go. Whoops. So this one here has just been reperforated, and these ones here are shallow perforated. So now, if I take my one needle bold, okay, this is where we could lose the butterfly. But I'm going to do it just so you can see. Okay, it looks very gappy, if that's the word. It's not as delicate. And they're very, very close together. Take your time, do it nice and slowly, like so. Okay, so I'm going to bring this up on the, the overhead now. Okay, I'll keep that in to create the focus. So, this one here, whee, this one here is just shallow perforated. This one here has been reperforated with a one needle fine. And this one here has been reperforated with the one needle bolt. Okay, so you can definitely see, you wouldn't think just a fraction of a size difference, the difference it can make in relation to the size of the perforation. Okay, so. If you're looking at starting out your pico cutting journey, for example, then you're doing straight lines or you're going around a design, then the two needle bold um, is definitely the best way to go for that one. So that it's easier to find the hole when you put the scissors in. But then as you get confident, you'll then go to the one needle fine to create a, a, a finer finish. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. So now what I'm going to do, let's do it on this one. So I'm going to re-perforate using the one needle fine. Okay, one needle, All right. there we go. I'm going to re-perforate the one needle fine on this one. Okay, so we're just working our way round. Now, if you know that um, you're not going to do any white work, then you can deep perforate first. Okay. So the only, so I know I wasn't going to put any white work in here. Then I could have deep perforated that design straight away, rather than having to to go back in. Does that make sense? Or I've just gone off the plot now. I think that made sense. Okay. So I'm just gonna work our way around. Just like so. <gasps> Slow down. <laughs> so that's got a, a double perforation now because I missed a hole. <laughs> Okay, and then for my final little finishing trick, I'm going to pico cut the inside of this design. Okay, so I'm using my ring lock scissors and I'm going to move it so my hand is resting. I'm going to get rid of the super foam because I like to be a little bit closer to the mat. Okay, so hang on, I get my eye in first. Get comfortable, okay. So, snip, keeping my hand in the same position. I'm turning my work, trying to keep it on the camera, like so. I think I need to refresh myself on my pico cutting. Sometimes it works fantastically and sometimes it's very hit and miss and I mean today is one of those hit and miss 
days. I'm sure we all have those, don't we? A hit and miss day. Okay. I think we're nearly there. I think we're nearly around the circle. Definitely need to. I only got these glasses earlier this year. I think I may need to go back to the opticians. Okay. So then when we do that, we then have a perforated middle, so to speak. Okay. So just to recap, just it's looking about the design that comes. And what happens is that you'll use those patterns again and again. Um, whether you use the same one all the time, it will come to a point where the paper will be so perforated that you won't be able to see the dots anymore. But I'd say you've probably got about two or three uses um, of using one pattern before you need to, to photocopy it again. So, um, but have a look at the, the blogs from Glynis this coming Sunday on the Clarity Matters blog. Um, check out Barb's blog later today for some beautiful artwork from the design team for um, the design of the week, which is that fantastic Christmas tree sampler. Quick and easy cards, just on colored parchment or designer parchment, job's done. It'll be the quickest card, Christmas card. It'll take you longer to mat a layer of mount and whatever on. Um, Tina's on TV on Crate and Craft on Thursday with the Pergamano show at 11 and three. Um, what else? What's on my list? TV with Tina, Barb's blog, Clarity Matters blog, Design of the Week. And I think that's it. I think I've covered everything that I'd like to have covered this week. So as usual, thank you very much for your company. It's always appreciated. Thank you to everyone that's tuned in live for the first time today. Maybe you're tuning in later. Um, I hope today's been of some help. Um, thank you to the lovely Sue popping all the links up, and the fantastic design team that are always there on hand to help. I saw there was Jane in the room, lovely Josie Davidson, Glynis. I even saw Carol in the room as well. I think both Carols were in the room. Um, so thank you. It is appreciated. So I will see you on Monday in the shack with Barb on those lovely um, the circle, nested circle embedders and those, that flower of life. Um, that's me, that really, I love all that type of stuff. Um, and then when Barb start, next week's gonna start to introduce the shading to it, all of a sudden, it's just gonna go bling. And then next week, we're gonna carry on with the next tool in the book, which is, so if you're looking to, for the next tool, which is the semi-square tool. So that's what where we're heading next week. So thank you as always, enjoy the rest of your week. And I um, hope the weather's kind to you wherever you are. And I'll see you all again soon. Soon? No, I, I will see you soon. soon. <laughs> I was about to say, I will see you all soon. And I saw Sue's name pop up. So I will see you soon, Sue, as well as everybody else. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>